Jane Donawald and I'm glad you're here visiting me on my YouTube channel today. I've got a great new technique for my collage series and I'm officially calling it an origami paper transfer. It's fairly straightforward, works best on a smooth surface. I like to use, the silk habit is my favorite. It works on paper. I've had, um, I've seen success on cotton and other fibers. So really the thing that's important to know about the background is that you are looking for really smooth, nice, uh, not pebbly or textured background surface. Now, I'm using a heat press because I have one. You may not have a heat press. If you don't, you can try this with an iron and you'll just have to extend the amount of time that the particular piece is exposed to the heat. I'm using origami paper and we'll provide the link that I buy online. It comes in a stack of multicolors. Not all origami paper works. What you're looking for is a paper where the color goes all the way through and it's not printed. So if it's a printed design, that won't come off. You're going to get the patterning from the stencil, so you probably wouldn't really care about using a paper that has a printed pattern on it anyway. All right. You can try other colored paper. I've also had good luck with Canson and Mitiente's um, art paper because it's dyed all the way through as well. But a lot of the time when you go into a craft store and you look at colored paper, it's been printed and then that's probably not going to work for this process. Okay, let me show you a few examples before we get started. These are all on silk because they were done for a Stencil Girl blog that I wrote. If you're not familiar with Stencil Girl, you might go and look for them. But you can see the pretty patterns and you can actually, if you check out this one again, you can see where I've actually been able, able to overlap colors in order to get even more variation. Here's an example that actually got too wet, but I love it because it's so loose and organic. Here's that same design, a little bit cleaner. You see this is a slightly more textured silk fabric, but it, it worked beautifully on that one. It is important to remember that the colors that are darker will be darker on the fabric in the end, at the, at the end of the process. So this is a little bit on the light side. When you get that origami stack, it's lots of different colors. So if you really want intensity, then you would go for the, the darker colors. And if, if you prefer a really light color like you see in this one, then that's the product of having the, the lighter colors. There again is an example of blending the color. And, oh, this is a really pretty one. You can overlap even the stencils in order to get more variation. There's my fish. All of these designs are, as I said, available at Stencil Girl, but you can use any stencil. I just happen to be most familiar and fond of them. That's an example of where we're headed. Now let me show you how it's done. Okay, here's how I create the stack that I need that I'm gonna put in the heat press. You'd do the same thing if you were gonna try this with an iron. You need a surface that is uh, heat proof. So parchment paper would work, but a lot of us have Teflon sheets because we use them for all kinds of purposes. And that's what I've got here. Teflon sheet goes down first, and I need to introduce moisture into this process so the paper gets wet. And I'm gonna do that by putting down, this used to be white felt. I've used it for lots of things and it's discolored, but it's clean. And that's really important because if the felt surface isn't clean, the color on the felt will transfer to your print. And that's an unhappy, experience, trust me. All right, then I'm gonna put down, in this case, one of these silk hankies. These are relatively inexpensive. I get them from Dharma Trading Company. I don't get paid for any of these endorsements, but I share them with you because you can get a pack of 12 of these if you really enjoy it and play around with them. You could literally sew them together in order to create a larger scarf or in order to create a quilt. The possibilities for that with the fabric are pretty much endless. Now, I'm gonna moisten, this is gonna get wet already because it's on the damp felt, but I'm gonna mist it with a little bit of white vinegar. I think the white vinegar helps pop the color. And then I'm gonna put my stencil down. So the stencil goes down on the fabric. In this case, this stencil is a little bit shy, doesn't fill the sides, but that's okay because the color will still fill in the edges. And I'm gonna do this one in red. The origami squares are, you know, pretty much standard size. I can use red for the whole thing or I can alternate. So I think I'm going to do red here and here. 
and I'm going to put dark blue up here. You can overlap the papers a little bit so you don't have an, a, an empty spot. And then I'm going to very carefully cover this with felt, also damp felt, and smooth it down. And then I'm going to put another Teflon sheet on top, and I'm going to carry this over to my press and put it in my press for three minutes. Okay, so I'm putting this, I think of it as a stack, inside my press. My press is already heated up. It's heated to, uh, in case you're not familiar with them, right now I've got it heated up to about 315 degrees, and it's already set for 180 seconds, which is three minutes, and the timer will go off when the three minute time period has elapsed, and then I'll open it up and it'll be like a holiday and we'll see what happens and how it looks. Okay, that was a fast three minutes. Let's see what we've got. I'm gonna take off the Teflon. Good practice is always to clean the Teflon as you work so that you don't forget and accidentally leave something on it that'll stain later. Things are looking good. I can see the blue color through the felt. This will need to be washed as well before I can use it again. And now I've got a little tool, a little picker here, so that I can pull off the origami paper. Oh, it didn't go as red as I expected it to go. That's okay. It's one of the fun things about this. The stencil is still there. And there's the print. So this is permanent. And if I wanted to color the areas that went that sort of pale peach, I would put this down on clean felt again. And I would leave it, I wouldn't wash it out yet. And I could either reposition the stencil slightly to get kind of a, a color along the edge, or I could put blocks of the paper down right on top of this and press it one more time, and then the two colors will blend, which is how I get the effect that you see on, on a piece like this, for example. I can keep doing that pretty much endlessly. Here's another example of what I was suggesting a minute ago of using the stencil again and just shifting it slightly in order to keep building the pattern. As I said, it works on paper. This could be fused to paper. If I had a long scarf, I could literally, in the heat press, do a section at a time and just keep moving the scarf across the press in order to do yard yardage could be done that way as well. It's fun, it's quick, it's interesting, it's got potential for your collage. If you don't have a heat press, try it with an iron. Just make sure you give it more time. That's the important thing. Instead of three minutes, you might have to go as many as five or even six. You can peel up a corner and check as you're working. Think of it as a meditation. And if you enjoyed this video and you feel as though you got something out of it, I hope that you will subscribe. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I will read them and respond. I love to hear from people. I especially love to see what you do. So uh, put it up on Instagram and let me know so I can take a look there and I'll do the same thing. If you follow me, you can see all the other projects I'm working on all the time. And as always, thanks so much for being here.